Bob here, Chopper Bob Customs. Hey, thanks for watching my videos. Um, thanks for subscribing if you're a subscriber. If you're not a subscriber, please contemplate doing that right now. Hit that subscribe button while you're out there. Hit the notification bell so you know when new videos pop up. Uh, also, I like my videos. Like I say, I like to be liked. Anyway, and if you got a comment or a question, please leave it in the comment section. Uh, if you got a question, I try my best to get back to you ASAP on questions. And then the comments need a response, I'll respond to them as well. And if they don't need a response, sometimes I'll even like them. So, because um, I know you like to be liked too. Anyway, today I'm working on the 57 Chevy. Um, today's project is going to be replacing the steering box and the steering column. And uh, so let me pause this and show you what we got going on. So right off the bat, we've got a Ford power steering box in this uh, 57 Chevy. And uh, uh, I'm trying to remember someplace on there, it's got the Ford logo. But, yeah, so somebody managed to get a Ford power steering box in here. Uh, the owner doesn't want power steering. He wants to go with manual steering. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is, of course, I've got a new center link. I'll show you that in a minute. New pitman arm, a uh, new steering box. And then if we come around to the inside... We've got a ladish model GM tilt column um, installed in here and he wants to get away from that as well wants to go back with the key on the dash as opposed to on the steering column and uh, so I've got the ignition switch that I've got to work out as well uh, hey while we're talking about comments and ignition switches if you know of a replacement for the 57 Chevy uh, ignition switch that divorces the accessories in run mode from the ignition in run mode, I sure would like to know about it because I would like to divorce the accessories from the ignition. This has got I've got so many electronics going in here that need a clean source, and I'd like to have it as far disconnected. I know they all go to the same place, so you don't need to tell me that, but I would like to have a separate terminal on the ignition switch for accessories in the run position, as well as an accessory terminal that only powers selected accessories when it's in the accessory position. And... To begin with, I don't believe the 57 had an accessory position. If I remember correctly, it's got lock, off, on, and uh, and start. Uh, so it would be nice to have one that has accessory, lock off, uh, run, and start. Um, so if you know something along those lines, let me know. Uh, what I'm actually contemplating doing is using a relay. Uh, time will tell whether that works or not, but anyway, uh, drop me a, a comment if you know of something. Uh, anyway, so let me show you what I've got to replace all this good stuff. With. Okay, this is a layers or layer A's, and from everything I can determine, this is not. A remanufactured unit I believe they are casting new boxes or they have a, a an inventory of new old stock boxes and basically it's essentially everything I'm reading about it says it's new now if it's not here again leave me a comment let me know what's going on but he's got this new 57 Chevy box of course it's got the long shaft and we're gonna have to address that because I do have a double D coupler, three quarter to, um, to one inch, one inch double D to three quarter inch double D. Uh, I've got a new pitman arm. I've got new bolts since the bolts are missing uh, to attach the box 
to the frame and then I've got a new um, a column up under the dash near the uh, dashboard uh, mount for the column. Of course, I've got the new center link uh, that I've already got the uh, uh, the tighter bearing type end on it as opposed to the bushing type end. So that's going to be a very um, uh, rigid design. Um, turns really easy, but also it doesn't have any flex in it. Well, compared to the rubber bushing, it doesn't have any flex. Of course, at this end, we do have flex with the spring-loaded um, connector to the... Um, um, to the pitman arm, but there's not much play there. And then we've got a new Speedway uh, tilt column uh, specifically for the 57 Chevy. So, yeah. So, anyway, uh, the owner supplied me with all this stuff, and so I need to get it installed, but before I can get it installed, I've got to disassemble stuff. So, I'll be right One back. One of the complaints about this car <laughs> was that there was too much play in the steering and the steering blocks. Well, the play actually was in this rag joint that somebody had put in here. Uh, it, uh, it is completely, well, not completely perished, but it, the rubber is shot. I don't know whether you can see that or not, but the steering wheel is, is turning eh, pretty close to a quarter of a turn without any movement of the uh, front wheels. Um, there is some play in the box, but this is what's really bad. Fortunately, the metal portions of it have not worn through. Uh, it would probably have been a while before they wore through, but once that happens, then you have no connection between the steering wheel and the steering box, and it's not good. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, loosen up this uh, pinch nut here, pinch bolt rather, and um, and then go inside and uh, start removing the column to get that out of the way so I'm not trying to fight the column to get the box out. Because I got a feeling that this box is probably pretty heavy. <laughs> the uh, support that cut off the ears. I'm going to have to pull it out of the car and fix it. So, let's continue with this assembly. Okay, so this is the... If you're doing this kind of stuff, put down the tools and step away from the vehicle. What we have here is what appears to be, I think it's a three-quarter double D shaft, which is part of the collapsible steering column. The uh, steering column itself has a, a double D that slides over this. And it is in a rag joint that is obviously trashed. But beyond that, this is actually a, I don't know whether you can see it or not, but this is a splined rag joint that they have forced over a double D shaft. All it would take for them splines to fail and he thought he had play with this one 
it, it would have been really, really bad if those splines had failed. Now, chances are they probably wouldn't, but this isn't right. You don't do this kind of stuff. So if you're doing this kind of stuff, put down the tools, step away from the car. Okay, I've got to take the, uh, the pedal uh, assembly out of the car. I'll show you why in a minute. But I'm hoping that it's fairly easy to do. There's one bolt right here that attaches struts that go up to the top of the firewall to the top of the uh, mount. two reasons why I need to take it out. One of them has to do with the power brakes that they had in the car, and the other one has to do with the steering column that they had in the car. Okay, so the moral of that story is, if you forget a bolt, it makes it very hard to come out. <laughs> anyway, uh, so what I've got here is the first thing I was wanting to uh, cut off, because you want a different pedal ratio with, uh, uh, with power brakes, uh, they welded a couple of tabs on here. Um, and I believe they're going to be in the way of the clevis, so I kind of wanted to get the, the uh, uh, brake pedal out so that I could cut these off and clean this mess up. Um, and then the other thing that they did, I'm going to cut that up too. Uh, I'm going to have to think about that. Um, yeah, because you can see that it bent there. But I don't know whether you can see this or not, but right in here, there's supposed to be a tab that comes up that the column mount bolts to. And then they also, I'm not exactly sure why they hacked out this big section here. So I'm going to have to um, do some repair work on this uh, to get it back to where it's going to support the column. And so that'll be the next order of business. Okay, so let's go over the full scope of the butchery here. Uh, <laughs> So, to, to make the column that they put in it work, they cut off these two tabs right here, and I believe there's also, this was all one piece with a, with a hoop up at the top. Um, this, See, I think, yeah, it goes like this. This attaches to those tabs that are missing, and it has bolts that go into the steering column right here and right here. So, um, I'll need to get those tabs replaced on there. Uh, also, he was missing one of the rubber biscuits, and he was missing the spacer that goes in here to dampen vibration. So, he's got 
one complete one and one incomplete one. And so I'm going to have to figure out what I can do for a bushing and a spacer to mount that. Um, and then they cut this out right here. And I don't know whether that was for... That might have been for the ignition switch. Not the ignition switch. Um, I can't remember what that switch is for. Or it could have been just so that the wires were long enough to reach the, the stoplight switch. <laughs> I don't know, but they've got that big gaping hole there, which sort of is what supports the steering column. And then they've cut out the support for the brake light switch. I think that's because they're using a non-stock brake light switch in it, which is fine. That's not structural. But then, they, <laughs> words can't describe the piled up weld on this. If you're doing this kind of stuff, put the tools down and step away from the car. Uh, so I gotta clean this up. This is the, the tabs I need to cut off. It would be a lot easier to cut them off if I can take this apart. It also, the bushing isn't in too bad a shape on the brake pedal, so I guess I could probably cut it off and clean it up while it's all assembled. Anyway, I got a text into him to see if he might, hey, he's got a bunch of uh, 57 Chevy parts to see if maybe he has an unmolested pedal support. If he does, it would obviously save a lot of time and money uh, rather than my trying to uh, fix this one. I can fix it. We'll see what happens. Okay, I haven't heard back from the customer yet. He probably thinks I'm insane looking for unmolested 57 Chevy parts. Uh, yeah, so I was correct. There was a hoop that went into this area right here, connecting this side to this side. Um, and they've cut that out. So if he doesn't come up with an unmolested one of these, I'm going to have to figure out how to, uh, how to make it work. But right now I'd like to get this pedal off of here so I can cut these tabs off. I could probably cut it off while it's on there, but... Um, I'm afraid I'd end up doing more damage. And I'd really like to get this so it doesn't have that big old blob of weld on there. Let's see if those if those welds are as bad as they look, this should come apart fairly easily once I cut the uh, pile of bird crap out of it. So if I pull the clutch pedal out, this brake pedal should come out. It does have a spring 
We'll see how this works. And now you have to take this out to get it out of there. Okay. So, I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup on this. Um, and um, probably take a lunch break. What a mess. Okay. Okay, with the brake pedal out, I can go ahead and whew, clean that mess up. cleaned up fairly nicely and uh, just remember boys and girls the only thing worse than a booger weld is a booger weld that has good penetration there we go anyway so for now let me uh, regroup and I'll be right back okay so off camera um, I took and uh, got a piece of steel broke it and welded it in here I need to clean it up a little bit but got that taken care of and then I went ahead and um, made a pattern for the pieces that have been cut off. And I double checked the original design uh, from uh, the assembly manual. And um, basically, this should be a stamping, but <laughs> since I don't have a hundred ton fresh I'm gonna go ahead and make it out of two pieces just to be kind of quick and dirty about the thing Okay, so <laughs> I didn't do everything on film, um, on video, because, well, just because. Uh, the stuff I was doing was kind of hit and miss. Uh, anyway, uh, let's see, where, what have I done here? So I've cut off and drilled out the bottom two studs on the front of the um, unit. These are the ones that the master cylinder attaches with. Originally, it attached with all four, but with the Willwood master cylinder, it only attaches with the bottom two. 
the flange is thicker on the wheel wood, so these did not, with the, with the uh, flange, with the bracket for the proportioning valve, the threads did not extend out of the nuts. And I wasn't too particularly fond of that, so what I did was I drilled it out so I could put some grade eight bolts through there that are longer. And not only will this allow me to um, put that bracket on for the proportioning valve, but then I can also put a washer and a lock washer on it so that it's good and solid. Before, um, with just the bracket and the nut, there was probably about two threads that were not engaged in the nut. So anyway, so I've got that done. Uh, I've got the, he wants the clutch pedal still in it. And so I've got the, um, I've gone ahead and uh, uh, made a spacer uh, for the spring um, lever. Um, I didn't really have anything to use. I had some 5 8 nuts, um, and I also have a 5 8 drill bit, so I was able to drill those out, um, or one out, and then I had to shorten it a little bit. Um, uh, and then it already had this 5 8 nut in there with a couple of washers. Uh, truth of the matter is, if he, um, if he um, wants to put a manual back in it, he's probably going to need to do something different because this is, because of the way they booger welded this up, I don't know whether I'd trust it or not. I mean, it's good and tight, uh, and it's spaced correctly, but, you know, and then... Uh, but the real reason that I was doing all of this was for the um, um, column support. Um, I've got it welded in. Uh, as you can see, I've got slotted holes so it can be adjusted up and down. And I tried to duplicate the, um, the serrations that kind of lock it in place. Um, it's not quite as pretty as the original is, but hey... Uh, when you have stuff butchered up, you have to do what you have to do. And of course, I added that piece back into the corner there. Uh, I did not add the piece that uh, is missing. That here, let me see if I can hold this. There, there's a piece that goes right in through here. The flat would come up like this and over to here. Um, with all the bracing and everything that's in it, I don't think it's necessary. And um, I mean, obviously, it was working without it. It was working without this bridge piece right here. So I'm kind of of the mind that uh, this is probably good enough. It's a lot better than it was anyway. So let me get it put back in the car. And I'm sorry, I misspoke just now. That's not the uh, spring lever. That's actually the lever that uh, uh, actuates the clutch. So... Uh, he, he definitely needs to get this rebuilt. He wants to leave the clutch pedal in it. We're putting an automatic in it. Uh, I think he just wants to fake people out. That's fine. <laughs> it's all fun. But uh, uh, if he ever does want to put a stick shift back in it, it's going to have to require some serious building because it is not very good. This is the um, bushing set the, that holds this bracket that I just did into the car. Um, there's a threaded nut in the part I was working on. Um, I take that back. There's a threaded nut in the dash. This goes through the pedal bracket 
has this spacer, this rubber bushing right there, and then it threads into the dash, and that provides a cushion. And I've got one side complete, and the other side... Here that I'm missing the metal sleeve and the two rubber grommets that go on there. And so I'm going to have to see if I can make these or whether I need to go ahead and order the parts. I think I got an idea on how to make them. Anyway. Okay, so I found a sway bar link that I had had in my junk drawer for a while, and I got two rubbers off of that, and then I took a piece of 3 8 steel tubing and cut it to length, and I put a little bit of a flare on both ends of it because it's not quite as large as the diameter as the OEM one, and so this should provide the cushion what we need for this um, brake pedal right. <laughs> Okay, so with the steering column out of the way and the pedal mounting bracket repaired, uh, the next step that I'm going to want to do is remove the steering box and the center link. And <laughs> the reason I want to do this first is at some point I'm going to have to cut down the three quarter inch diameter steering shaft on the 57 box and I've got to make it match up with the steering column at a point that I'm not really certain where it's at so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this junk that's going to go away here you can see the Ford logo on the uh, I don't know whether you can make that out yeah there Ford logo right there on the steering box Ford box and a 57 Chevy I don't know. Anyway, uh, um, so the first thing I'm going to do is get this out of here, get the 57 box in here so I can get an idea of where it's actually supposed to pass through the firewall. And then once I have that established, whether this hole right here where, it came, where the steering column came through is correct or not, um, I, I can make the, the uh, I can adapt it to where that needs to be and then I can go ahead and put the column in it and see how far the column is going to extend into the engine compartment and that will start to give me a guideline of how long the shaft needs to be on the 57 box and of course then once I cut the shaft off I'm also going to have to modify it 
into a double D shaft because right now it's a three eighths round shaft. So this is gonna be exciting. Okay, so first I want to uh, undo the uh, center link and I intentionally left the nuts slightly loose to make this assembly a little bit easier. Okay, and I'm going to leave the uh, center link attached to the box. I hope that's not a mistake. We'll find out here shortly. And that thing is a chunk. I, I, I think I'm going to put something in there to protect the upper control arm for when I And there's two bolts holding the uh, box to the frame. So let me get those pulled. See what happens. numbers correctly this came out of a 71 or newer truck uh, the D meaning the 1970s uh, the one meaning uh, uh, 1971 and then the T is for the truck line at least that's what it would have been originally designed for would be a 1971 truck and then of course they used them in years later and they also use them in other vehicles, um, it, but the original design was for the 71 truck. Uh, in case you want to put uh, one of these incorrect boxes in your 55 to 57 Chevy, there you go. Okay, so at this point, uh, as I am editing this video, I've come to the realization that I've got too much material and this video is going to be entirely too long. So... I've decided to break it up into part 5A and part 5B. So this is the end of part 5A. Uh, I will get part 5B uh, uh, posted here soon, I hope, probably within the next day or two. Uh, but for now, let's just say Chopper Bob out for now.